appreciate it. Um, as you guys know, uh, we repeat it every Thursday. This is only our 45th consecutive Thursday, minus Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, the industry has changed. Uh, there's been a lot of turmoil. There's been a lot of disruption. But we're still here. And we're still pushing. Um, because we believe that Atlanta has, as a city, what it takes to lead to be a blockchain innovation hub. And there's so much talent here, like Peter and Shark, as you guys are going to find out pretty soon, uh, that I'm, I'm really proud that I made the move from Miami. So we're going to make Atlanta great. Atlanta is going to be one of the top blockchain innovation hubs over the next two to five years. Uh, we're going to, is, they we're just going to, <laughs> we're going to profess that today and put it out there in the universe. Yeah. And it's because of what we're doing here and the support of you guys and uh, great guys like, like Peter and Shark. So today, we're talking about investing. And um, Peter, thank you for coming. Peter will introduce himself, and he's been in the space for a very long time as an investor. Uh, Shark as well. So I'll let you guys run the show. And uh, thanks again for coming. Sure. Appreciate well, it's it. great to be here. Thanks, Milo. It was great to be at the launch of the Atlanta blockchain chapter here. Uh, how many of you guys were here on that day? You guys all remember it was hot as all. <laughs> I mean, they had good drinks and they had good food and they had some great speakers and some luminaries from the city, which was really amazing. But it was just really great to see you plant that flag here. So I've been in Bitcoin since 2011. I bought my first Bitcoin at 252 cents. If you open up your phones right now, and you Google the Bitcoin Lambo, you'll see my fucking face. So, <laughs> and the guy who started the meme, uh, when Lambo, when Moon, he said some things. Like, if you type in Bitcoin Bro in Google, I'm the first search result. So, I think it's from the TechCrunch article or the Forbes article. But uh, I built uh, three startups. One was a nine year grind, the acquisition. So, I truly understand the entire life cycle of building a company from all the way from bootstrapping to venture capital, all the way to closing the deal. And then I've uh, completed two other startups with an early equity buyout. I built three venture funds. So the first one was in 15, 14 and 15, and two and a half million family and friends. Uh, learned a lot. Uh, then we raised our second fund in 18 and 19, $10 million fund. We returned 50 million in 2021. So it was 5X return. And now I'm running a $50 million fund with my principal back there, Peter Luxon. So we uh, deployed we deployed in money into 22 companies last year uh, in the Web3 space, and we're looking to deploy even more money. So I spend my time uh, between here, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Miami. So I'm really excited to be speaking today and, and speaking with Shark here. Uh, we're going to be talking about investing, and I, I put my card on all of your guys' seats so you guys have access to me. So look me up. We're deploying capital in early stage Web3 companies, so we'd love to learn more about your thesis, how you guys are deploying it. Uh, how you guys are building and what your, uh, what your overall mission is. So, appreciate you guys uh, giving me an opportunity to share a little bit of my story here today. Wow. He just made me feel like crap, bringing yeah. cards out for everybody. Um, I like making money. I really don't want to make money. I don't know a thing. I haven't even heard. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Shark. Uh, for those of you that may or may not know me, previously in the entertainment and gaming industry, transitioned over to Web3 around 2012 to 2013, early on. Missed the wave, but really was there on the infrastructure side of things. Uh, currently, day-to-day, -day run an agency specifically focused in Web3, so we're working with other agencies, helping them in brands get into Web3. So that's Peloton, that's the guys over at our planet and more. Um, on the venture side, I run a fund called Pop Fund, so we're a fund and venture studio. So we're advising projects early stage, all the way up to seed and series A, working with the likes of Techstars and also startups backed by Comcast, Aptos Labs, and more. Um, in terms of other funds we work with, we are on the advisory and scouting side for Valhalla Ventures, which is the backers behind MoonPay, Spaceport, and a bunch of different other infrastructure in applications as well as space. So <clears throat> excited to be here, excited to support and see and talk again about innovation in the space and where we can be from ideation all the way to execution stage to support. So we had a conversation uh, yesterday afternoon kind of discussing what we wanted to cover here. 
and I thought it'd be kind of be important to open up and setting kind of the, the, the context and setting the table for how we've seen investment change in Atlanta over the last couple of years. Marlon's a, a recent transplant from Miami, so he doesn't have all the historicity and experience of how Atlanta has been such a doldrum of the investment world. But now that Marlon's here, everything's picking up. <laughs> so I'll start off with a little bit of context. So one of the most frustrating things that I have found over the last, let's just say, decade, I've been to the last six Venture Atlanta conferences. How many of you guys have been to the Venture Atlanta conferences? Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody else, you guys are saved. It's a waste of time. The, re the reason is, is every time I go, they're only investing in three things. FinTech, SaaS, or healthcare IT. It's so boring. And what's so terrible about this I, is, is that this is their only focal point. But yet, at the end of the day, how many of you guys believe that in the next decade, FinTech, healthcare IT, and all SaaS platforms are probably going to be running on some type of blockchain? What do you guys think? Okay. So Venture Atlanta, in the end of the, at the end of the day, is going to have to invest in Bitcoin and blockchain startups. Would you agree? Yeah. So that's why we're here. We're here to take over. We're here to bring up more Bitcoin, more blockchain, more digital currency awareness and education to this space here. And I wanted, I wanted, one of the things I want to talk about before I let you uh, give, your, give your side of it is I want to talk about how we, as a corpus group, really bring some more action to that. Because, man, I tell you, I, I watched Atlanta be surpassed by Austin over the last 15 years. Like, Austin came up, and I was like, I was, it was almost like I was watching Austin grow grow beyond it and I was like why didn't why don't we why aren't we the startup hub uh, for web three that we need to be and so I'm gonna bring some ideas to, uh, to the table and then we can open that open up those doors afterwards I mean I, I have a different thought right like I one a 10 venture land that's still good networking to have right um, um, I, I feel like healthcare IT and SAS, I, SAS there's and SAS. more than that but you know <laughs> but we're gonna put that to the side for another day right so reality is this, right? A lot of these investors, a lot of people, right? Most consumers, just in general, your mom, your dad, whoever it is, does not understand the applications of what Web3 can lead to, right? How it can be built. This FinTech, healthcare, SaaS, whatever it may be, can be built on a layer that nobody needs to know or understand. The end consumer does not need to know or understand, right? The reality is, does the team operating behind it know and understand how to execute and do the partners that are involved know and understand how to execute, right? That's general reality, right? From even ticketing as well. Um, I think with investors and with the city, and yes, Austin's a great example of this, right? That, hey, they got on board early on, even Denver, right? Yeah, Denver too. Den Denver's a really good example where the city got on board, they started putting money towards grants in the ecosystem, especially like with Gitcoin in the development there, and then also said, okay, look, how can this A, benefit the city? How can we be an impact a, a role in the startup development and ecosystem? And also, how can we usher Web3, right? And like with the Austin, they did ATX DAO and everything like that, which we kind of discussed what the roadmap should look like in terms of the city and how the city gets involved in a space like this. That's where my head, right? It's more about education. Because the reality is, the majority of these investors don't understand. Hey, and it's not discredit to them; it's just they only have so much bandwidth as well. Is hey, this is what Web three can do. This is how it applies to your day to day and what you understand. And this is how it revolutionizes your industry in terms of fintech, etc. That's the path of resistance. Where it's just going to take time to educate. Them. Absolutely. So, I wanted to ask how many of you guys are currently creating content around your startup or your own brand? <clears throat> okay, so that's, that's where I want to start. For everyone who aren't, isn't creating content, I'm not going to invest in you. Pure full stop. If you're not creating content, who's going to be telling the world about your message? Who's going to be telling the world about your idea? Ain't, no, ain't, nobody, ain't nobody like your idea more than you. Ain't nobody going to build your dream for you. Anybody going to push your product for you? So you have, we have to start there first. And one of the things that I want to want to bring into the conversation here is how can we start building content not only for our own startups and our own brand, but also for the Atlanta blockchain community here, because that serves in so many ways yourself. And so one of the things that I'd love to do, 
because I'm not a command and control guy. You guys all have Twitter? You guys all have Instagram? Pull out your phones right now. Pull them out. Take a picture of this group, tweet it. Instagram, Snapchat it. Do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Marla, what's going on, bro? He's streaming. He's streaming. He's streaming. He's He's on Twitter right now. Right now. I, and, and the reason I bring this up is not to force, create a forcing function for you guys to create content or tweet about this or you know hash, you know uh, add us or any, anything like that. The purpose is that investing is changing, and invest and, and, and the the investment market is changing so much in terms of the. Oh, there you go. There you go. I feel, I feel like you're giving me a camera. Yeah, Let me take a picture yeah, yeah. of you in the crowd, bro. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody, we're going to get it on him. One, one, two, three. Oh, bro, you're going to have the best photo. <laughs> <laughs> so tag at Atlanta Chain, at Atlanta Chain on Twitter. Uh, I don't know what your what your handle is if you want to uh, shout it out. Cloud Fund VC. Cloud Fund VC. And my my handle is Agile Peter. So Agile Peter, you can tweet it out. That way we can let everybody let everybody know. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> look how look how much look how much good juju we're getting. Good marketing we're yeah. having. Yeah. It's already. And so and, and, and here's here's the point I want to make. So let's drop into the point here. It, the investing model today in Web three starts with you. It starts with you investing in your own brand investing in your own narrative and communicating it out. And, it ha and, and that's my main call. I was writing some notes down in my notebook that I left in my Jeep, which by the way, I saw all the Jeeps here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can, can I be part of the notes? <laughs> 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 I got the Jeep that was white Jeep Gladiator. Oh, nice. You need to hook me up. That's all basic, base ass model. <laughs> it's it's part of the family. Okay. Okay. And so uh, for part of our thesis as a venture fund, and I like talk about this just a little bit, is that all of the investments we make are in operators have to be promoting their own stuff through social. And I think that's a, that, that is a powerful differentiator in today's market. With all the static and all the information that's being blasted at you from different angles, from different social media platforms, right? you have to get into that mix and start communicating out your message. And so that's one of the only things that I really wanted to, to hone in on in today's talk, is to make sure that we have a mindset continuing to push our own narratives, our own products, our own brand, as well as Atlanta blockchain, because the more that, and I was talking about Marlon, with Marlon about this right before uh, we sat down here earlier, is talking about how the entrenchment, and the longer that you are tied to this association, the longer that you give and invest your time into this, it'll give back. So I came in, I came in early, I was like one of the first people here, right? And Marlon was, was uh, mentoring one of the college kids. You guys know he does that stuff, which is so good. It's like touched my heart. I remember being mentored and it's so important to me. And I was telling him, he was saying, you know, he's, he's talking to this guy and you kind of shook your head and you're like, you know, they're not building anything yet and I cut you off. And I was like, you're not going to get paid back from that college kid until seven years from now. Right? He ain't going to build shit for the next five, seven years. But when he does, he's going to remember your mentorship. He's going to remember the relationships you build with people like you guys here. And the content that you guys create today, the narratives that you guys create today, become part of your story of what you built and where you came from. And these are the stories that really matter. So speaking of, I'll, I'll, I'll end there, but I just wanted to kind of do that call to action, kind of a CTA here, to, to promote not only Atlanta blockchain, but obviously your own narratives, your own stories as well. I think the, the question you're asking is, what are we looking for, right? in terms of either projects we advise or invest in or want to support and see win, right? The reality is, of course, like, it's got to be a sound and solid idea, right? Like, obviously, right? It's like, these are basic things, right? Got to be a pretty sound and solid idea, and it's got to make sense. And sure, it's crazy. Like, again, the, this reason we're crazy. But I think the way I look at y'all is, hey, everyone's on the sales team, right? For your own brand or project and everyone should be selling i look at projects that are trying to understand hey where they can make impact in terms of innovation that's why i look at it, right your content and marketing and how your outreach it does help because what happens is now TikTok is your new news feed right it's a, it's a life-changing reality that hey startups and content live there 
and you're able to instantly swipe through and see what's going on and see what's going on in the space of who's talking about what or what startups are happening. Or if you're looking at like the financial market, like um, Austin Hanklitz, really good YouTuber and content creator, fully focused on the financial and stock market and also a startup market. And you're seeing how his impact or the guys who are at work week as well are able to simply leverage media. And that's a really big piece. But building your brand and narrative should not deter you away from also building your product, right? Sure. Building a solid product, because you can build a solid product and not have media products. Some brands just don't. But nowadays, or especially like what you guys are doing in the consumer space in a consumer application, you do want a strong, solid presence <clears throat> to at least have a brand and understand that we need to be here to be present. Absolutely. So the second thing that, and I'm, I'm not trying to dictate the kind of the, the flow of this, but I have a couple things on my mind. So the second thing I, I wanted to dis discuss around what we're looking for in terms of in investing is community, people groups, right? Network. So the reason I always start with content, so I, I'm gonna give you guys access to my third book. So I wrote a book on this. And my third book is called uh, Gravity, how to create unlimited deal flow, unlimited brands, these types of things. So I'll give you guys all access to my third book that I wrote on how to leverage your social media as the mechanism for funding. So for me, so if you guys have done any research, so if you type in Bitcoin Lambo, you find out you'll find that I have a 1.8 million subscriber YouTube channel in the car in the car space. My my venture fund. So our venture fund has 360,000 subscribers. Think about the advantage that I have over everyone else. Every time I make an investment. 360,000 people hear about it. Now, do you think that I can manufacture growth? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? If I post that I invested in this car startup, my 1.8 million YouTube channel, and then my 360,000 YouTube channel, my 60 other 60,000 sub subscriber YouTube channel, which is called DCTV, Decentralized TV, which is a live streaming YouTube, and then I also posted on my personal YouTube channel at 30,000, I'm touching over 2 million people within the first 24 hours. And so this is an absolute, absolute killer differentiator. And so let's back up. Creating content, obviously you have to have a great idea, like table stakes. Your idea has to be good. But I'm gonna amend to that a little bit. With your with your branding, your narrative, and your pushing on social media, and you will grow a community. This community are gonna be your first users. They're gonna be your first people for UAT and feedback. They're gonna be the, the first beta testers, your alpha testers. They're going to be the ones who actually, according to A16Z in the article about raving fans, some of you guys have probably read that, some of them will be, end up becoming your raving fans, and they will work for you for free just because they love you and they love your idea and what you're doing, what you're promoting. And so I'm giving you kind of the inside juju of how we as a venture fund here in Atlanta really use this rubric as an investment rubric for the people that we invest in. Now, if they're building SaaS, IT healthcare companies, <laughs> uh, they probably don't need a Facebook page for that. But I would actually, I would, I would actually go farther and say, why not? Why not they be the most egregious and aggressive healthcare IT SaaS investment humanly possible? And you might say, why is that valuable? How many of you guys have seen commercials that go viral that have no context to the actual thing they're selling? Does that bring traffic? Does that bring eyeballs? Did they make something funny? It's like, yes, it's not contextual, it's not relevant, but at the end of the day, it grabs people, it grabs the community. So content is the first part. Content grows community. So I'll give it over to you. I know you probably know a lot about community. Um, I do, right, coming from that background, but I think you're right on, you're right on one thing, right? It's understanding who your consumers are. Yes. In, really early on as you're building the startup, right? Like this is a whole other conversation of hey, that process of building a startup, doing that customer discovery, doing that like work to understand who your super users are, and who will become the alpha and beta pilot user that says, hey, we are your super fan, right? Your super consumer. That's now going to be your evangelist. That's what else is important. Yes. To pitch for you and say, hey, this is the product we use, here's what, right? And most of y'all are probably at that stage where it's, hey, you're figuring out, you're breaking things and you're saying, hey, we're at a point where now we're understanding what our product market fit is, why we're relevant, why we matter. And the reality is, again, 
have product based and have storytelling based. Because now you're having your consumers and also yourself tell and sell the story. Okay, this is why we're doing this and this is why this matters. So that's like where my focus is when it comes to communities. First, again, creating that core user base and saying this is who we work for. And then letting it ride from there, right? And letting that be your marketing engine as well. Of course, obviously, you want to build a brand presence. You want to be organic. You want to be on all these channels. But really what I would say is like hyper focus on one or two channels that work easy for you and best that you understand. And then scale the rest. And if not, don't hesitate to ask your friends and other startups as well. I promise you, we've all been through the same thing. And 99% of it's like, hey, OK, how do I do this? Why do I need an ads manager? What X, Y, and Z question, nine times out of 10, another startup will know and give you the answer. Because we're all trying to get to the same end goals. All of us are trying to make money and get investment and raise and build an actual successful company. So I'm, I ended up just trailing into a talk I did at the Bitcoin conference last year. So it's called the three C's of investing. So I gave you the first two, so I'll give you the third. So the first C is content, the second C is community, the third C is care. So the, the third C is care. So how do you mobilize? How do you mobilize your community? You have to care about them, right? And what care looks like in so many ways is engaging them where they are, equipping them when they are, enabling them where they are with your narrative, your message, and maybe even a little bit of swag. And so this allows them to be evangelists for you. And these are some of the questions that we go through when we're sitting down with young bloods, the people who want our money. The first conversations we have is, great, you got CAC, you got your idea, you got your vision, here's the problem, here's how you're solving it. Then I go into the question of, where's your content? I, I looked you up, I couldn't find you. And they say, they don't have it. Like, well, then how are you getting feedback? Where's your community, the community of supporters, evangelists, uh, subscribers? Where are those people? Don't have it. Well, that makes it hard for me in this Web3 world, in this multimedia world that we live in, to go to validate myself because I'm just one guy. And let's be intellectually honest. As venture capitalists, we might hold the power of the purse, but we're just as stupid as everybody else. Right? <laughs> He might be like, speak for yourself. I like data. I like data. A <laughs> we don't know everything, right? Like that's that's a reality, right? If I knew everything, I wouldn't be here. I'd be yes. at home enjoying and playing video games all day because I'd already be making tons of money, right? So I'm surprised you're not on Twitch. I, I, you have a great personality. For I, 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 I refuse to stream. I like, I like being behind the scenes. Is it beneath you? No, it's not. It's not really effort. I'm, I'm lazy is what it is. Okay. But, uh, Don't be lazy. The, <laughs> the, when we're asking these questions, right, and when we're gathering everything, right, and there's there's toolkits, there's like Techstars toolkit, YC's toolkit, and more. Every Every venture funder, you can angel trying to understand one thing. What's making the needle move? Why? And where can we support in the sense of financially, but also socially? In the sense of when I say social, I'm talking social capital. Right? It's what relationships do we have that add value? Where does this add value to our portfolio, et cetera? And that's where that matters. And like we come in from like a venture studio side. We, we work a little bit differently at our fund because we're coming in at the ground up. Even when there's no money, it's just saying, okay, look, where can we come in from an advisory perspective and help you build and get down in the dirt with you and in the trenches with you? And so it's also like answering, hey, what does that long term roadmap look like? But again, this the reality is you're selling a vision. And we have to be able to understand that vision, back that vision, and also understand it by the numbers. Most VCs, most angels, majority of them will take a look at pre-seed and tell you, hey, we're not going to touch it. Very few will, and that's where like angels and families and friends will come in. But when it comes to funding, most venture funds like Valhalla and others won't look at a product if it's not already got traction. It's not a point that makes sense, but it's like, hey, this is where we can step in and why. Wouldn't you say, because here's, here's a question. <coughs> Wouldn't you say that while that, that is important, it is very much a traditional kind of mental model around venture capital that it has to be, but you got to <coughs> understand traction. Uh, but in many cases, it's the primary rubric and the primary object that they care about. 
what, what would you say would be a secondary optic or a secondary value stream that is important from your perspective beyond just the, the revenue and the traction? God, you're really going back to that sea, aren't you? It is that constant of community. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. He, he yeah. baited me with that one. Like, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of content of community. Right? We're stupid. And so the, I, I, there's a great quote from a, a great system center. His name is Edward Stenning. And Edward Stenning said this. He said, in God we trust, everyone else brings data. That's on our website. That's <laughs> on our That's website. Right. So if you go to stas.fund, you'll see it on our website. In God we trust, everyone else bring data. For me, for me, regardless of whether you believe in God or not, you understand the point. Uh, data is king. We now live in a, in, a, in a world where data has to be part and parcel of the narrative that you have around your startup. And for me, to validate any type of revenue, to validate any type of traction, I want to talk to your community, right? This is, I, I, I find this to be one of the greatest differentiators for us picking great startups, is not only do we talk to the operators themselves, but then we ask them, tell us your number one fans in your community. Give me their email address, give me their cell phone, let me talk to them and what they think about your product. You know, what, who are they talking to about this? And this is, this is, I've, I've talked to many venture capitalists who are like, bro, Peter, like so much fucking work. It's like, well, yeah, I want to win. I want, I want, I want your company, my investment in your company, to be a, uh, you know, 10x, 20x, 100x. And so I'm willing to do the diligence and ask the question of, tell me, tell me your, 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 your fans. Tell me to give me one of your best subscribers. Tell me one of your community members who is at one of your recent meetup groups. Right? Give me that person's uh, information so I can ask them questions around what they believe. Have you sold the vision effectively to them? So Shark was talking about. You know, practicing your, you know, your pitch or these types of things, your community is the best place to practice that, right? And if you have great people in your community who are willing to be candid and honest with you, they'll tell you if your idea sucks. They'll tell you if your narrative sucks. They'll tell you if you need to add this in. Well, they might not be sophisticated about it, but your job is to extract, right, those learnings from their feedback. And so that, I think, in today's Web3 world, so I'm trying to be a little futuristic here, but at the same time, do you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just in the terms of like data collection in Web3 world and social spaces, how much do you fear Discord to be important in that mix versus other channels? Uh, what are your favorite channels to go do your research on? Discord is the best mechanism in terms of community engagement from an asynchronous pers perspective. I hate Slack. Slack's too crooked. Slack, Slack's too archaic. Slack's too crooked. Slack, Slack, Slack. Slack. I keep on me, right? Like if it, if it's me that put that to me, I, I, a lot of my contractors hate me because of that. But I say if you're looking at where does communities live in like this age or in this ecosystem specifically is Web3, it's Twitter and it's Discord and Telegram. Those are the three spaces. Telegram's a lot of noise, but there's specific communities in there. But like if you're saying, hey, where should we build our projects in? Nine times out of ten, I'll tell you, hey, go grab a Twitter, go grab an Instagram, go build a Discord. Yep. Your community, where you're probably going to run 99% of your D D operations, everything, you probably just run out of Discord. Because we did that. That's actually, I'll tell you our startup journey. So the last startup I was at, we, from Atlanta, it's a team of three that <laughs> came out of Georgia Tech. And I ended up joining them and ended up running with them. What happened is we actually built the company all off of Discord. And built this web platform that was to play video games with my like favorite celebrity. We ended up pitching and pitching and talking to angels and getting feedback. And like Brian Warner and everybody was like some of the people we pitched to, and ended up getting feedback. But Brian passed on us, right? Brian, Brian was like, look, this just isn't for us. But kept giving us feedback, kept guiding us. We ended up applying for an accelerator called TechStars. We ended up applying for a couple, so we applied for YC which is one of the biggest ones I think everyone kind of knows, like like the big three accelerators are YC, Techstars, which you know is in Atlanta, right? They have the Cox, and then they have, we applied for Comcast and Boomtown, and we had applied for a free accelerator called Plug and Play. They take no equity, and they help make introductions for, because the corporations are funding the accelerator. So your Nikes, your Hershey's company, whoever are paying for the accelerator for you. So you have free resources, and then on top of that, if they ever want to write a check, they'll give you an option to say, hey, 
way less. You have a great system. I'm happy to like educate you all about that. But we ended up going through Techstars. And what Techstars showed us was, hey, we had to first understand who our customer was and do that customer journey again, even if we already thought we knew. And pivot was a big thing, learning and realizing that, hey, sometimes a product has to pivot. And we built that journey from there. What ended up happening was we raised a couple of million dollars. I left the company. They pivoted again. And as of what, past couple months, now things are changing. Things are shifting for them. So that's like an example of the journey of like where we, our customers lived was Discord. Where we interacted with them was at their Discords or at their territory or even on Twitter. And we were always on the phone with them, talking to them, understanding what the problems were, and giving them feedback as well. The reality is when you're trying to pitch this grand vision, most of the times it's the question is how can you dumb it down for me to understand, hey, we're doing this, we're solving this. It's as simple as that. Like, of course, you may or may not have heard this in the space. So I run our entire venture fund in this group. So oh, that's, that's an interesting answer because I was thinking about how to then turn your Discord into that. Community? Yeah. Right. So you, you just create different channels for different topics. So uh, our community Discord has like 40,000 people in there. Mm -hmm. And so we have about 12 different moderators that moderate and kind of keep things clean and keep things nice. But those 12 moderators are some of our biggest fans for some of those startups. But they're the ones who are working for free. They're the ones who are going to the meetups. They're the ones giving out Slack. And it's all because they caught the vision. They feel they are been cared for by you, nurtured by you, given some semblance of responsibility, right? Manage the Discord server, right? Make sure that you're building an open to if your investors and your 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 co investors are in that same Discord. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So everyone's in there. You Discord's a tool, right? And I would say don't be afraid of it. What I also say is like, hey, you might not have a big 40,000 person Discord like he does, right? Then again, the numbers with him just go up. Mm -hmm. But it's all there. It's all there. <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> the, the reality is like, hey, you can have that public facing Discord, right? And say, hey, this is the public space for our community. Things live here from their day to day topics to the lives about our pets sports, et cetera, whatever, right? And then about our product, and et cetera, we can show you that by like even different spaces and what their purpose for, right? Or product feedback, et cetera. And then if you're saying, hey, where does my team live? That's more of a you decision, right? And where do you and your team operate also? Yeah. So I'm going to give you guys some secret juju. This is like, I, I, you guys need to hit me up. I'll give you all the secrets. Trust me, I love giving away secrets. So here, I'm going to show you. Here is my, here's one of our Portco discords. Okay. So we have general, media, marketing, design, dev, docs, mining, operations, finance, legal, ideas. So today, today I did. Here's the secret. Today to this entire company, what did I do? I posted an update video from the VC. Just wanted to drop you guys a note on this Wednesday, April 20th. Right. It's so I, this video is seven minutes long. Kind of disparate parts that were kind of amalgamated together. Put together. Yeah, let me close this down. So many why, why is this the secret? Because when you're in the community and you're in a Discord and your VC comes in and makes you a seven minute, 12 minute video talking about, I saw this, you should improve this, let's have a conversation about this. Do they feel cared for? They got a fucking private video from the guy who handed them a $250,000 check. They're going to work so hard for you. And all it took me is seven minutes to say, I saw your latest update. I like X. I don't like Y. Let's talk about Z. That, and, and ABC is what you need to think about for our, our next thing. That's why I forgot to mention. We, during Tech Start, we were raising money. When raising money, our investors came to us and asked us for emails of our customers. And we had a free go to those customers and be like, hey, are you comfortable with us sharing your email? They're doing background checks on all of us. We literally had a, a Google Drive document full of FAQs that we would send investors. You know, look, before you ask us these questions, probably we've answered it here. We're still happy to answer it again. Some of it, or we have like a playbook that we reference, but nine times out of 10, they check the data, right? And they'll also ask some of our customers or whatever case studies. And that was a big thing when we got interviewed by some of our VCs, right? Like Larry Hippo literally said, hey, do you want to understand 
who are your customers? Can we talk to two or three content creators? They ended up emailing and texting them and got on calls with them. And we found out. And like some of the teams and brands, they know each other. They know who you're talking to. Like if you're saying you're talking to ex-customers, they know how to get a phone call over to that customer and find out if you're actually talking to them. So like be straightforward with the VC, but be organized and understood, hey, this is again, yeah, a pathway. And Discord's a great place for you to connect with your, your VCs that way. So that this one secret, I think, it covers a multiplicity of sins. Do you find that people, sorry, just going at but do you find it to be more powerful than doing a newsletter? To I, I I'm a I'm a VC. I hate getting newsletters. I hate getting monthly update emails. I ask my operators to make me a video, so that I can watch their intonation, see their excitement, mm -hmm. see their frustration, see their anxiety, because I'm reading the person. No, there is no problem that has encountered any of these operators that is uncommon to me. They're all suffering from the same dysfunctions that everyone else is suffering from. Not enough money, not enough traction, not enough customers, not enough ideas, not enough backlog, right? They're all suffering from the same afflictions as everyone else. I want to understand how I can serve the person better, right? So which is why I ask for videos. I don't know about you, but I, I can't do, I can't receive from the three, final three days of every month, I used to receive tons of emails from all the investors, and they're all just boilerplate nonsense. Like, we. We're we're all still we're ninety percent away to our milestone. <laughs> we've grown by we've grown by two percent on our outbound email campaign. <laughs> like motherfucker, I don't care. Like, how are you doing? Are you still excited about the investment? Are you going to persevere? Right? And um, I'll give you the fourth C. So it was content, community, care, commitment. That was the fourth thing. You gotta commit for the long term. So that's why I want video. I want to see whether these guys are still living and breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Especially during COVID, I didn't know if they were still alive. You know? He's committed to having more seasons. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so committed COVID. Yeah. Committed COVID, yeah. That was a bit Don't do don't fuck with COVID. I say for an organizational stack, right? Like Everything should live in a Google Drive somewhere, right? If you use Outlook, I, I, I'm sorry who hurt you. But um, I like CRMs are great. There's a lot of like tools and resources you, you can use to organize your tech stack and make life easier to communicate with the investors. One of the tools that we use to communicate our monthly updates, even from like I've got a startup as well, that I've built, so like I communicate with our updates, is paperstreet.vc. Great tool, it's free to use. It's a hey, templated investor newsletters that you can say, hey, ask, product, whatever's going on, X, Y, or Z category, and then you can just literally say, here's all the emails I want to send it to. Boom, everyone gets a personalized, hey, here's our investment update, right? The letters that he hates. <laughs> but, but for me, I read those, right? And I understand, hey, all right, cool, you're crushing it here. Oh, shit's broken here, why is it broken? Hey, X, Y, or Z. Because the reality is also you want to make things digestible for an investor or even just a partner or somebody who's understanding. Because as soon as they get that update, they probably might share it, right? And they'll say, hey, are you interested in this deal? Does this make sense? Or would you be down to have a conversation? Because then I can say, hey, this ex-gambling brand that we're advising, I can now go send over to my friend at Fubo and be like, hey, does this make sense for you? If so, happy to make an intro. Because nine times out of ten, people are reading those updates, understanding what can they do to help you, what can they do to extract value from you. This is how. Yeah, I appreciate that question. Mm -hmm. That's good. That helps. That helps us. That helps us as speakers up here. If you guys have other questions, you guys want to ask us. Oh yeah. Well, I'm just kind of big back of what you were saying. I hate saying that. I was saying. Um, to your point of like receiving videos, especially in today's day and age with AI and how. Know, explosive that's been over the last couple of weeks and months, I can imagine how much that contributes to those kind of templatized newsletter or formatting of the documentation and all of those things and the verbiage as well. So I definitely agree with your sentiments on like actually being able to see the person behind it and the intonation. And at the same time, I do recognize that there is still value in that written, even if they're using AI, right, to be able to have it displayed in a concise manner and able to extract those data points in a way that allows you to make moves on an asynchronous thing. So I do see value in that. So I, I think maybe the best method for somebody is to have 
Both of those things. Can I tell you a, a, a tweet I made like a couple of days ago? So I, in this tweet, I said, I truly believe the future of AI looks like this. Dude one says, man, I can make an amazing email out of this short sentence. Dude two says, man, I can take all these large emails and break them down with just one sentence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, everyone's just using AI against each other. I'm using AI to send you a nice blurb. You're using AI to succinctly put it together. <laughs> so maybe AI is, but exactly to your point. The reason why the reason why I care more about the human side, what I call the human side of software development, is because I know that if I can help that person as an individual succeed, then my money is safe with them, right? And and for me, when I pass on deals, I pass on videos. Right? I say. Look at this guy. This guy that I invested in is he fucking crushing. Look how excited he is. Look, 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 look how much passion he has behind him. And by the way, he's by the way. I, I know, and I can tell you, he's actually dying. But he's so passionate. But that matters, right? He's like he's suffering the good, good, the good fight. And so that for for me to be able to pass on a video and say, man, and let's be intellectually honest, guys. Like we as VCs or any investor is still human at the end of the day. Right? We still care about visual agreeableness. Look like a, if you look like trash, it's going to be hard for me to invest in you, right? Like visual agreeableness matters. Communication style matters, right? Sophistication of communication style matters, especially to me. Like you talk, you talk intelligent to me, I'll take it all day. But let's go deep. Let's go sophisticated. I want to talk about the deeper nuances of, of your humanity and your realities and why that matters to you and how that affects your startup. Yeah, I was looking for um, a resource that I had stumbled across. There was a gentleman working on a project called The Human Stack. Very much to your point, his whole perspective is working on the human side of technology because it's often overlooked. And I think your perspective from a VC stand, actually looking at it from is this person alive? Are they doing well? Are they actually excited about the project versus you know what that individual was seeing? Why they created this um, you know movement for the human stack? And also what I'm seeing in I guess the educational side of it, right? Like I just spent two months out in. Cali to do some work with a nonprofit agency to help them learn about tech. And you know, the first thing I said when I walked into their room with the boys earlier, like, hey y'all, I don't think y'all understand how early we are. Like we are so far ahead. Because the vast majority of people, even on the consumer level, the people that your startup companies will want to pitch their stuff to, they're so far removed from what this technology could actually do for them and how it would actually benefit them on the day to day, right? Like there are like, yeah, there might be communities of Web3 people that are thriving and starting to bubble up, but they're few and far between, right? Oh, it's still, still very much the fringe. Still very much the fringe. Um, so oftentimes, when I, when I see that, right, when I move through the world and I see how much there's a disconnect, and I, I think that gap is actually widening, unfortunately, um, just because of the way that um, uh, startups kind of position themselves the way that ai is rolling out and the way that consumers position themselves as well oftentimes like i'm seeing more pushback from change now than i've ever seen before it's interesting you say that i've had some really powerful conversations as of recent around that exact idea where it seems like we're almost regress regressing away from what we because of the mainstream media and the mainstream media narratives and these types of things uh, it seems like people are getting less informed, interestingly. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Yeah, because feeling that too. more combative because, like, I was, uh, I was listening to something, but the I, I was listening to Sam Altman, and, mm -hmm. right, and he was talking about that fact that we're actually building in, like, transparently, mm -hmm. right? Gives everybody to kind of catch up earlier to the tech, but now with have the ability to have this discourse and that discourse, you can immediately take a side against the tech, right? Versus before, when you were building it kind of in private, you kind of had that shelter to get where you needed to go without that discourse, but then you left out some of the people in the back end. It's like, you can catch you, you can try and capture, but then there's still a lot of like noise with the other that don't come along. So I mean, you know what I think? Um, Bear with me with this example. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, um, I'll go after him because like, this is a different topic. Oh, no <laughs> worries. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, like, as far as like what Joel was just mentioning, like, 
it reminds me of like what happened with Trump, right? Like when Trump got elected into office, right? Like people are like, oh, all of a sudden, where did all of these people come from that are like, you know, starkly against this movement of like what this particular perspective is, right? And then the reality of the situation was like, no, 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 they've always been there. This was just the catalyst that surfaced that, right? right. So when you look at AI, Web3, and all of these things, as we are moving in the space, catalyzing the populace, we're starting to realize that, oh, those people who were none the wiser and who were always resistant to change, they have always been there. They were just never the loud bunch, right? right. So often we were working in silos amongst right. those who were familiar or comfortable with tech, thinking that that was what most of everybody was comfortable with exactly. or could move into. The, the real, the, one fun fact, I think it's Parler Truth Social, the CTO's here in Georgia, by the way. He worked at you were at you were not ATDC. Really? Yeah. Really? I, yeah, bet yeah I, I bet him. <laughs> I bet him. I have him on LinkedIn. He's, I'll find him. I'll send you his info. But he's here. So that's, that's the fun fact of the day. But fun might be a stretch. But the reality is, right, especially in Web3, what we, I think I've seen is just like the products were built by engineers for engineers versus by engineers for mass adoptable yeah. consumers, right? What Polygon's really trying to push, and like this is what we talked to their venture team about, and they're like super interested in, is again that mass unrealized adoption, in the sense of, hey, everyone's gonna be able to tech. Where does it live, right? From your day-to-day -day Starbucks rewards and all that, because most consumers don't care about tech. They care about brands that they're loyal with, and even then brand loyalty can go out the door tomorrow, because one brand's offering a better benefit to another. So you, right. for, you had another yeah. topic, and then you. I, I was just going to quote an example. Like, like a, a pretty big failure was virtual reality. Mm. <laughs> I mean, the amount of engineering that goes into a gaming engine, like, you can't, like, that's one side of the spectrum. I don't know, on the other side of spectrum is also consumers or normal public who is making TikToks. Like, how does the mirror know there's an egg behind the... So, I think, how, how do you think content can narrow that gap? Well, we'll see, so I, I'm, I might be a little bit more progressive in this idea. I, I think the, the creator economy, you guys heard that phrase before, the creator economy has truly jumped the shark. And what I believe is the most important brand, it's fascinating, it might be counterintuitive, I think the most important brand is your brand, not the brand of your company. And let's be let's let's be intellectually honest. Why do people love Starlink? They love <laughs> Tesla. They love Boring Company. It's because they like Elon, right? Right. If it was someone else making you know rockets and stuff, or you know boring stuff or flamethrowers, you probably wouldn't be as interested. You're like, that's cool. But Elon is the product you're buying. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so, because of this creator economy, I truly believe that the best investable investments, this is my opinion, Shark can give me give his, his opinion as well. My, my opinion is I'm investing in the person. Oh, yeah. right. Like, your idea, frankly, isn't that good of an idea. <laughs> right. It's been already commoditized. Right? There's a book in the Bible that talks about it. There's nothing new under the sun. Yep. Right. Frankly, that's true. And Andreessen Horowitz would say, and he, he's quoted as saying this, that the startups today are either bundling or unbundling. Mm -hmm. You're either bundling multiple disparate apps into one unit, or you're taking one unit and pulling out those apps for that specific function that you believe that you can monetize and make really valuable. And so, in my in my opinion, the creator economy, your brand is you. So you need to be promoting you. Whatever you do, your fans, your subscribers, the people who like you, the people in your Discord chat, they're gonna follow you whatever the fuck you do. Like, I, like, like, peace, guys, peace. I have guys that have been subscribers to me since 2005 when I came from Korea. So I moved from Korea to Atlanta in 2005, and I started building startups, investing in these types of things. And I still have followers, subscribers to my newsletter from 2005 and six, and they've invested in all of my investments, right? The ones that they can as non-accredited investors, right? And so these can be lifetime customers for you guys, not only for the idea you're rocking right now, but the idea you're going to rock in seven years, yeah. right? And so growing that community, I, I'm harping on it, but it's so crucial, guys. 
but growing that content, growing that community, these guys can work with you and work for you for life. And these are the people that, these are the investments I want to make. Because if I know that you're out there hustling and grinding, you're creating relationships with customers, users, uh, potential customers, and these types of things, I know that you're creating the relational equity that matters, right? It's, it's exactly, and I go, I go back to this point, right? Like everyone's wearing that sales team hat. Your brand is your sales team, right? Your brand is you. And that's like, if you're on Twitter, great. Are you participating in those startup convos? Are you going into those Twitter spaces, et cetera, right? Are you part of those narrative dialogues, conversations? Are you physically at those events? Are you doing these things that put yourself into that spotlight or even around that line like, okay, now I'm associating myself, hey, thanks to our network, we're able to get those introductions, get those things. Like my career person was built off of Twitter. Tweeted a lot. And this guy's bad math itself. I hate. I, 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 you just said your entire career was on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm old, right? Okay, I'm 27. I'm old. And, uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and the problem is, I, I have sold my soul to every digital application, application in the world. So sometimes I want to hurt back and just avoid everything tech. And some some days, right? Now I feel old, man. But. <laughs> But I'm in my 40s, bro. Why you making me do that? I'm trying to get here. We're good. Okay. But, but it's saying hey, those partners that I became friends with through those people, I was interacting with people, we're staying in touch because of social. I'm building social rapport. I'm participating in those conversations. Hey, now I'm able to be like, hey, look, I need an intro. Do you know X person? Hey, I need this or hey, I think we're doing something cool. Can you share, spread, show some love and support? But they just might organically reach out to you and be like, hey, we're down to help support you, right? And you already know this from a culture, just like personal life aspect, but now it's understanding it from a professional aspect of, hey, we can be here, we can have this conversation, we are sound, we can live here, right? And that's what it is. Like, there's a guy, um, his name is Ryan Solomon. So R Y A N, last name is S O L O M O N or M A N. You can stalk him on socials. I promise you, he's a friend. He's very public about it. He's a VC. He is also a content creator. Co creates for content for startups. Created it for Entra, this like startup LinkedIn. And then ended up, because of all the content he made on TikTok and tweeting so much on Twitter, actually getting a job offer from the guys over at work core like X hustle in leadership and ended up helping them build their venture fund got a shit ton of deals and then ended up instead building now what is their newsletter their b2b newsletter on like on owning fast food franchises and things like that randomly and like Nick Sharma uh, he's they're running okay. Nick Sharma's newsletter so just think one guy who just was going so hard on TikTok and Twitter he ended up building this entire personality and network and then just kind of ended up building a life, right? Having a real life and going out and doing things and meeting friends and creating that social capital. Because then it creates that emotional currency that you can then leverage and say, hey, this is what we're doing and we're trying to leverage that emotional currency. I love it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's go to the back. <coughs> yeah. Um, so, so, so like, like I want to, because so I'm going to start right now and I want to know what you guys kind of like, kind of like, how do you guys help founders like balance like the social media aspect and also like getting work done? Like, how do you balance that? 16 to 20 hour work days. You're young. I mean, <laughs> he's 10 is 20. I'm in my 40s. So for me, and, and, and this is no hyperbole, there's, there's, no, there's no hyperbole here at all. There's no exaggeration. My bro, the 20s, 16 hour, 20, 20 hour work days. Like that, like you don't need a girlfriend. You don't need the, the new ride. You don't need the cool apartment. Ain't nobody gonna remember that shit anyway. Right? I drove an '86 Chevy Celebrity for like the longest time. People said it was a shit box. Don't care, right? Twenty years later, no one talks about my shit box. I actually think about my Chevy Celebrity. I should have kept that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome call, right? But you're in your young years, man. That's you need to grind it out on all sides. So there, there's a, a rubric that I got laughed at when I was in, and when I was 22 years old, uh, when I was searching for some of my first money in college, and uh, an investor asked me, he said, "Why should I invest in you? Why should I invest in you, young blood?" 
And I looked at him and I said, because I'm not going to quit. Like, I will work harder than anybody else. And the two things that I care about most is no quit and, and uh, resilience. And he laughed at me. And so that got me salty and mad. And then I sold my first company after nine years for $17 million. <laughs> but it was a nine-year grind, right? It was a nine-year grind and 20 hour, you know, 16, 20-hour work day. So I'll give you your first tip for balancing, creating the product you want to build, and the social side. The social side should be only a fraction, like 5% of your time at the most. And I'll give you the best hint to creating amazing content every single day. The hint is this. Document. Mm -hmm. Don't create. Creation takes way too much time. Yeah. It requires you to cre create scenarios and simulations and words, word play. Now, fuck all that noise. Document what you're doing. What that means is you turn on a camera and you say, guys, I am going to blast out my vision to the world. And today is going to be day one. And I'm building XYZ startup. And I just want you guys to know, hashtag crush it. Bro, people want to come along with your story, especially if, if you're willing enough and humble enough to socialize and communicate what your dreams are. Mm -hmm. I, I never had any ego uh, in regards to my marketing of myself, and it's probably because I'm on the spectrum and I lack the emotional capacity to understand that. But at the same time, I think that was a blessing because I never worried about all the people that are like, why are you? Mm -hmm. You know, the one, I, I tell you, the one thing that, that did offend me is when my cousin hit me up. He's like, bro, I saw him on Twitter, bro. Like, what are you doing, man? And I was like, bro, what are you doing, man? Like, that really hurt me. Because I was like, you're family, bro. Like, why are you, why are you, like, you should invest in me. Instead of hate on me. Isn't that fascinating that your closest crew, your closest homies are the ones who won't give you a dollar? And it's the ones who don't know you. That'll be like, here's, you know, I'll, I'll donate to your thing, right? So I find that to be fascinating. So document, don't create. And you can document 15, 20 minutes a day and post content every day, that'll grow your brand. You can spend 10 minutes documenting what you're doing in Discord to your community as you start growing that. Again, it'll take you less than half hour a day to do it. And, and if you do it every day consistently, that'll grow everything else. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll give you one. Let me ask this one question of you. In, in one or two lines, what is your startup? Yeah, uh, so basically, like, we're a marketplace for a business like Business and communities, um, and so like the problem. No, no, okay, redo that. Redo that. Okay, we we enable businesses to give partial ownership to their consumers for user feedback. So how it works is that um, is that basically we create uh, tokens instead of like regular like reward points. So when people buy stuff, the people that buy the most get to have direct user feedback for that company. And so right now, like we're targeting um, like clothing brands. Um, and so um, our, our, our assumption kind of is, is, is that like, that's gonna lead to more um, customer retention and loyalty uh, for those brands um, in a way. And so, uh, yeah, and so currently we're just, we're just trying to interview more uh, businesses, and so we're kind of getting that feedback right now. Yeah. So, so you are a tokenized reward system yeah. that rewards users for feedback on a function of how much data they give you. Yeah. Okay. Understood. You, so one, definitely you heard those keywords to pull from your pitch, and here you yeah. like revising, no, you're good, right? It's the one thing we've learned is practice, right? It's, it's the one thing I doubted when I first came into our accelerator life, and it was like, I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. I'm like, yo, we got this. I know this phrase down. I know how the lingo. First time I spoke, I got it. The, dude, I hit a brick road, just like hit a brick wall straight in. I was like, oh shit, right? I forgot everything. Just I forgot how to talk. I just knew how to talk about myself, and that's where I saved myself. But when it comes to work life, right? Like the question you earlier asked. I'm a horrible example of it because I work the nonstop hours or like I still haven't slept today, right? Like it is just the reality of it. The you're gonna just don't burn out is what I would say, but you're still gonna clock in those 10, yeah. 16, 20 hour days where you're having to multitask and function. But also the reality is yes, you will have to cut back on lifestyle, right? 
not in a sense of maybe your social life or aspect, because there are things you can still do and have a social life. Don't just immediately cut everybody out and isolate yourself. But hey, you might not be going to everything. You might not be living the greatest of life. You might not be eating the greatest of things. Or hey, like for example, I'm still crashing with family while still building or still running X business. Why? Because it doesn't cost me X amount to rent or do things. That's just the situation. When we raised our startup money, we lived in a basement. My CEO and I shared a basement that was actually this big. We got raided by a SWAT team on April Fool's Day. We did all this. Yeah, no. We went through that journey. All in a basement. That's like shit happens. That's what it our, yeah, our Airbnb hosts tried murdering each other during COVID oh, while we were raising. Oh, and it became a little bit. We dealt with that in the basement in Seattle. Yeah, like, like men, right? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he went medieval, man. So, so like, that's just the reality, right? And like, what I would say is, like, really just be good with time management. It's a personal thing. Like, I live by Google Calendar. If it's not on Google Calendar, don't talk to me. Yeah. I don't know you. I didn't book an appointment with you. Family, sorry, right? I love you too. I'll text you. Mm-hmm. Right? That's just like, that's not as a VC, this is me as an operator or a human saying that, right? So we hit the 745 mark. Uh, you guys feel free to take more questions if you want. I do want to add one thing that, you know, uh, Travis omitted is that he's part of the uh, scholars program at ABC. <laughs> he's a graduate. <laughs> Next month, see this computer science student. Hey. Um, and I think he's going to do some amazing things in the future. In three. But if you guys want to fill a few more questions up to sure. you, but yeah. still a couple more. I think right. you had uh, So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. I mean, I really I think it's a, a really a mind you guys. Like, this, you've been juggling a lot of different projects and also investment at the same time. But one thing I, I kind of like also feel sorry for VCs is that I feel like too much junk nowadays. Like I was in conference last month and in a particular industry, but so many people talking about AI. I just, because I've been working on it for over six years with UiPath, right, but we see like a lot of people don't really know what is AI. So same thing, different uh, topics and people just trying to follow the buzzword. So how do you guys like, I know like probably like, Hundred people you talk to, maybe only one or two really know what they're talking about. A lot of ninety percent, maybe they're just trying to use a buzzword. I, we we're part of an accelerator in California. I know one girl from UK. She was just doing a massager, and she really so. But as you said, she was very persistent, right? I mean, she didn't give up. But I just don't see what. But basically, she's throwing a lot of buzzword to it, whatever. Yep. So how did you guys? Oh, I'll, I'll, you know, no, you say it. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I, I know the exact thought that Just you go was, first then. You go first then. She knew how to, like, okay, that person knew how to sell. Yes, but the, I, I'll say this in the nicest way. Most VCs know the bullshit, right? Yeah. In the sense of, hey, you can pitch the next hot buzzword, but, all right, cool. We'll ask the question. Well, what is behind that buzzword? Tell us. Educate us. Explain to it. We're, we might not, we actually might know it, but guess what? We're going to act dumb as hell. We might not know it. We actually might. Our investors didn't understand shit. That's what they told us. When we came to found out, they knew everything already. They're just asking us the questions to see if we knew. Exactly. And they call us out on it. Or, exactly. Yeah, I, I, ask, I just ask a lot of tough, tough questions, but I'll tell you my best question to cut through the bullshit, and uh, uh, this is something that I think all of you guys should have an answer for. <laughs> And the question is simply this, why you, why now? Why you, why now? There's a thousand other people that can do it right now. So why you and why right now? If you don't have a good answer for that, then I'll find someone else who's smarter, better looking than you are <laughs> to do your idea, right? And maybe they have better you know, perseverance or the better grit than you. But that helps me uncover like who, who are they really and what are they really all about? Why you? Why now? And that's when stories come out that actually matter. Right? I heard a story from a, from an operator just a couple weeks ago. I asked him. I said, "Why you? Why now?" He said, "My mother's dying of cancer. I have to do this." I said, "Motherfucker, I'm gonna give you money because you're fighting death. Right? You can't defeat death, but you can slow it down." 
And I know that you have a purpose beyond yourself. You've transcended yourself. And for me, that is going to be a lifelong, well, hopefully, as mother, God willing, lives as long as possible, right? But that is a that is a driver that wakes them up every day. And actually, that driver is more important than his idea. But you know what? For, for him to tell me that, I was like, that's the best answer I've heard so far. And I don't think he made it up, right? But like the way that he was communicating to me, I was like, this is the, out of this 20-minute conversation, this is the, the first time that you've actually been honest. You are actually human to me. The buzzwords disappeared because this actually matters. And you can't practice... You can't practice pitching my mother's dying of cancer. Like that flows from the, the soul, right? And so that's what I'm looking for, is I'm looking for the soul level. Like are you, if I, if I give you money, are you down to grind this out and, under, and have a purpose that transcends what you're doing with me? Because that's, that's the only way that you're going to persevere. Especially, that's the, I think there's a distinct reason why a venture fund thesis is 10 years. It's because that's how long it takes to build a successful company, 10 years. Like my, I, I was bought out, I was acquired in my first company at nine and a half years on the dot. Nine years, six months in one day. Like I lived the entire lifespan of that venture fund that invested in me. And it took, we pivoted three times, or uh, we pivoted in our, our second year, our third year, and our, our fifth year, right? And it's just what's required. And almost went broke how many times? <laughs> Every year. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the actual reality. Like yep. Nine out of ten companies will go broke. It's just like you, know, if you, you do what you can. You borrow money from friends. It's just like how it is. But I, I think like there's a, the takeaways here from today, right, or in even something we didn't talk about, is one, VCs are humans. You can talk to them, have a connection, stay in touch with them, right? And you're outreaching, making relationships. That's like a basic. But number two, I hope you guys kind of understood that, hey, there is a place where your community lives. There's a place where your brand lives. There are four Cs. There might be a fifth. You, know, <laughs> you understand what those Cs are and what to take away from those, right? And I think that's like my thoughts of today of like what this conversation should be is how, again, can we guide you to being successful entrepreneurs and having that backbone to say, hey, here's what we're building, here's where we're at, and here's how we get to the path to success. I like it. That's a great way to close. Last question? Or two, 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 five, five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, when you, okay, you all talked about the human side, you said the human side of development. When you consider that, um, for something somewhat parallel to the core idea of like the human stack, like something you want to exponentially like growth. Yeah. Like, yeah. Your um, your startup success is a function of your personal growth. Mm -hmm. If you're not growing personally, your startup ain't gonna grow. Okay. So um, but I, I gotta finish. I gotta get it. Oh get it out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. For something somewhat parallel to that idea, what is the psychology behind presenting and in turn educate? And then also is there even is there even room for like aesthetics and all of that? And also if you wanted to create something that goes beyond a target market. Do we face the public with open arms or send invitations to the circle? And also, given that users' deriv uh, users derivative application could be malleable, how do we like handle all that? Okay. So, number one question. What was the first one? <laughs> oh, I said so much. Bro. Okay, first one I said when the human side of development is considered and for something so unparalleled to the human, to the core idea of the human stack that can be exponential. What is the psychology behind presenting and in turn educating? Oh, uh, so education. So you're talking to someone who has three graduate degrees. So I have a master's in counseling and organizational behavior, a master's in education, cognitive learning theory, and a master's in divinity focused on religion and apologetics. So I just spent a lot of time. I still disappointed my parents because they didn't become a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so coming from a deep educational background, I'll tell you this, the more that you educate yourself, the more that you'll be able to communicate and the better, better socialize your ideas. And I'll tell you why. The more that you create content, the more that you communicate, the more that you educate others, the better communicated you become. And the best communicators in the world are the best at selling themselves. So let's be intellectually honest. If you extract yourself out of the meta from everything that I've said today, what am I doing? Selling myself. To be honest, I'm good at it too. Right? 
And so that's your job. Your job is to become the eloquent about your idea, about your passions, about who you are. You need to be able to expound across the entire spectrum of your human experience, right? And that's that. I'll, I'll tell you that the best and most captivating moments when I'm sitting in a, in a pitch room with, with operators is when they tell me a damn good story, right? When you tell me a damn good story, then I'm emotionally connected with you. And we all know that we make our best decisions when we're highly emotional, right? That's what you want. You want to get the, the VC, I'm giving you hacks. You want to get that VC in an emotional context where they see your, themselves as part of that narrative and they say, fuck, if I join that guy, I can win. Right? You just start it with just data and facts alone. Yeah, I, did. I, I can conjure those up myself. But you tell me a great story, a story that matters, a story that can pull out my heartstrings, and a story that's eloquently said with a great drop into the, to the core idea. Bro, that's how you sell ideas. And the only way that you can sell that idea is you become a great communicator. And the only way to become a great communicator is you gotta put yourself in a seat and you gotta communicate all the time. Right? I've been doing it for two decades. Right? So I polished it. But that's where you guys need to go. Think of it like this, right? Data and facts are always gonna be there. That's a, a given. When you look at like those school presentations, those basic ass PowerPoints, ain't no one gonna look at, nobody's gonna care, right? You, your brain immediately clicks off. What happens is when you're communicating with either your consumer or maybe the investor, remember them gave you money or gave you their time or their partnership, whatever it is in that scenario, you're having to sell them on a story of who you are or who the project is and create FOMO, right? Yes. Because it's, it's, it's a game, right? It's more about, hey, can I, A, communicate this data and this story in a way that matters that you'll actually give a damn about. And then once you give it, damn great, can I create that phone that says, hey, if you don't jump in now, I promise you, you will regret it for the rest of your life. Even if I might be wrong, I'm sure as hell not gonna tell them that. I'm gonna be like, look, I'm gonna make sure you're missing out on something so epic and prove to you wrong that if you don't jump in now, you're gonna regret it. That's the story you're trying to tell us. Because again, VCs, angels, whomever you're talking to, the next business partner you're trying to work with, or et cetera, are all human. They all have an emotional engine that you can take. It's a currency. And, yep. and I'm, I'm borrowing this phrase from M. Cole, who BC out of Atlanta, runs Rise, Rise, which is a sports venture. It's the same thing, right? It's all about emotional currency. Their whole thesis is, hey, can we leverage properties in our IP to build and leverage that emotional currency to then expand? And that's what they did really, really well. Because they leverage that emotional currency to go raise their round go do these activities, to go invest in these startups. It's all about emotional currency. Because then, hey, an impassioned investor like him will come in and say, hey, I really got a hot one on the shit. I also really want to support I'm the best investor to get emotionally like riled up. Because then I'll start telling you your narrative for you and communicating your idea back to you. And that's when you know that you're done. Because right? then I'll be like, hey, so you're talking about X and Y and Z. And I can see it working like this. And now I'm so you can scale it this way, the unit economics sound like this, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> right. So that's what you want to get. You want to get them into the store, into your life in your store. Absolutely. So do we face the public or do we like, like bring people in? Face the public, dude. Face the public, dude. Like, like there's, I, I don't, now, again, you might have a different. No, no, I'm trying to understand when you're saying face the public, face the public in what sense? In the sense, uh, like, okay, like, not gatekeep, but like your idea is not that good. No, I'm saying no. I'm trying to make it like If you're talking about building your project, no, building your not building the project, but just like it's like if you want to have something that if you want to like provide something like a user can have their own a different take on the application. You see what I'm saying? User feedback, maybe. Could I? I, I I'll, I'll just I'll just speak broadly. When I, when I heard you say, speak it out to the public, I say absolutely. Let the world know. Let the universe know your just intentions. Just keep moving up. No, so, hey, see this wood? Let me ask you this. Is it, if, if we take this wood and we put this outside for the next 50 years, would this wood disintegrate? No. Some wood. The, an <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah. So, how is something like this solid 
how is something like this, how does these things disintegrate? Where it's vibrating. Yeah. It's moving. Everything is moving. So I'm getting real meta here. Okay. Right. It's moving. It's vibrating. Everything inside you is vibrating. So guess what the entire world is? Vibrations, wave, vibrations and waves. Actually, Tesla said that. Since everything is vibrations and waves, I know for a fact that if I communicate out my story to the public, it's those waves are hitting somebody important in the future. Or they're hitting them now. They just don't know. They haven't met me yet. But by 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 being being confident is I guess the word I want to say. And being proud of what you're doing, shouting out to the world, bro, that that those vibrations, those waves, everything's moving. Everything's connected, man. And people will hear that. I can tell you a hundred stories of me and my principal, Peter Luxon back there. When we have can I tell him the story when, when we had that when we had that, that heat moment? I say no, I just don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like so, so I'm on Discord. I'm on Discord. I'm in Oklahoma with one of our huge to huge um, startups and hundreds of millions of dollars out there. Um, and I'm in the hotel room. I'm on Discord, and he hits me up on Discord. He's like, bro, I just had this massive heat flash. Like, all of this, like, heat went into my chest. And I was sitting there, and that exact same thing happened at the exact same moment. And you might say, Peter, hokey pokey. Okay, whatever. I knew for a fact that at that moment, he was aligned with what we were doing. I was aligned with what we were doing. And we were open. And I told him, you remember this in Discord, I was like, the client, he accepted like he's closing, he's closing. Like we now had a third entity in the world aligned to us, and we both felt it. And call that pokey pokey, call that you know magic, whatever you want. It was real, and these things happen. And so I truly believe in the power of, of transcendent energy. I truly believe that if you're positive and you're constantly communicating out your message to the world, it is landing on ears that you want to hear. It's landing on minds that are open to it. And you're not going to be the one with a little bit of ego, maybe even a little bit of hubris, so willing to say, you know, guys, put a stake in the blood. This is what I care about. This is what I'm doing. Who else is going to do it for you, brother? Nobody else is going to do it for you, man. No one's going to build your dream for you. That's for you. A lot, of, a lot of these projects, right, you know, have their space and be able to speak their narrative, right? I say, if you want to look at like really, really building in public, look at like the DeFi applications or look at like what Metafy, M-E-T-A-F-Y, is doing. Uh, raised from 776 and a bunch of other funds. Uh, Josh Fabian's his name, built a gaming, it's a gaming education platform, literally they get coached by a pro player. He ended up building entirely in public where his investments, his investor letters, everything was like that publicly transparent versus some of the levels of like where Peter might be or I might be, might be, hey, look, like our mentorship might be a bit more private, but definitely like our public thing, of course, is like, hey, everything we're doing, the updates we're making, maybe the big, big goals we hit, yeah, like, hey, we hit X amount of dollars today. I'm stoked about doing this. Cool. Those things you can share is just again about communicating, right? But then again, we're not so we're saying the same things on the feet. It's about communication. Yeah. Last question. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. I want to ask you about the four season about like you talked about the community. And I want to ask if like, I understand if you're doing a B2C business that and I understand what you mean by community. Let's say you're doing a B2B or you're even thinking about doing a business. But mainly let's say B2B. Like you only have three or four or maybe five clients. What would your community be? Your community. Let, let let me let me give you a, a an example. Okay. It might not be a very good. Let's say that you're building the next great CRM tool for healthcare companies, okay. customer management relationships, okay. healthcare for healthcare companies. Okay. <laughs> you might say, why should I create content around that? The answer is, nobody else is. Mm -hmm. Which is why you need to. Which is why you're going to be the most flamboyant, egregious, aggressive megaphone in the IT healthcare CRM tool world, that people will see as that really unique character that is willing to talk and engage with, what, is, what do CRMs engage with? 
management, human resources, right? Stakeholders, product managers, salespeople, marketing people. And so when you start saying, when you start blasting out, hey guys, I'm, I'm, this might sound odd, but I'm really excited about building this high healthcare a CRM tool, and I'm going to document my journey of creating this. Guess what you're going to find? There's riches in niches. There's riches in niches. So, it should be niche, but riches in niches. So, riches in niches, man. You could be the guy who's, who's, who I someday read in, in the future on TechCrunch. The guy who has 2 million followers who built an IT healthcare CRM application. And he created some really funny comical videos about the, let's just say, stereotypical dysfunctions in corporate America dealing with CRM tools, right? We can think of a thousand corporate jokes about how people use enterprise tools inappropriately, right? Yeah. You're just the guy who videotaped it and willing to put your face on it. They're going to buy you because you're the one. They're, they could choose from the plethora of different CRM tools, but they don't know who those people are. They know who you are. Let me ask, what is your startup? What are you building? I don't have something yet. I just, I just <laughs> literally finished today my course in my class, my exams at Emory. Congratulations. Are you graduating? Yeah. Congratulations. Are you graduating? Uh, two weeks. Awesome, man. You're already right. this graduation. What's your, what's your focus? <laughs> what's your focus? So, yeah, I did a master's in finance. Okay. Yeah. So, so we have computer science. Finance right. next month. All right. Yeah, so here, here's a journey I haven't heard of yet. A guy who just graduated college with a degree in hand, and he's been studying finance. <laughs> I haven't seen that story yet on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. Why don't you be that guy? There's riches and niches there. How are they going to hear about your idea unless you talk about it? And here's the thing. What's great about humanity is because of the internet, the internet has a, uh, a memory of about eight hours. So even if you post content today that says, I'm going to build the world's best CRM IT healthcare company, and tomorrow you say, you know, I'm just going to do a dog walking app, mm -hmm. no one's going to give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to care. No one's going to care. Like, I can tell you stories for days about my millions of followers and subscribers who watched me move from uh, different applications to Bitcoin mining, so I got 23 acre, under 65,000 square foot mining facility in North Carolina, right? To building web web applications. These are all disparate ideas, but they love listening and watching and following what I'm doing. And so far, many of them have made pretty good investments along the way. And so that just builds up their confidence, that builds up their fidelity to you, and they want they want to see you win, and they want to win with you, right? So. Isn't you know that what uh, Justin Kahn was doing? Like he was broadcasting himself. All Justin Kahn is what a good friend of mine. So Justin Kahn, he, he started Twitch. Yeah. Right, but he was broadcasting TV. himself. Justin TV. All the time. Justin TV is yeah. when he started. Like I remember watching him. You're young, man. You're, you were like nine years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You should. You shouldn't have been watching him at nine years old. <laughs> <laughs>
So what are you going to do next? We're going to stay in Atlanta. There's a lot of things coming in. Yeah, let's 